Now, we always do Collector's Corner on a Sunday and it's lovely that this week we've got somebody actually in the studio. So when I play this jingle for it, it's going to make sense. It's Collector's Corner, so now let's welcome to the studio this week's collector. Yes, he actually is in the studio, which is terrific. Uh, we have James Hyman. Uh, James, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Gary. Thank so you for inviting me. So what is it me. you collect? I collect magazines, specifically popular culture. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records for having the largest collection of magazines, currently up to about 80,000 magazines. 80,000? Where on earth do you live? I live just very near here, but don't worry, they're not all there. Where are they it's all then? They're all in a lovely new premise in Woolwich, a place called the Stockroom. You keep your Mac so you don't look at them? I look at them. I look at them. Which is your favourite magazine? I don't have a favourite. They, they, res- they, well, they favorite. resonate at different times in my life. I mean, I like, okay, I'm tell me into- where you started. So I was a scriptwriter at MTV in the late 80s, early 90s, and you know there was no internet then. So to get your information, you got it pretty much from magazines. That gave me the bug for reading and collecting those magazines. Scriptwriter in what sort of way? What were you putting what were you words writing? into the mouth of the VJs as they were called, the video jockeys? They, you know, they'd say, "Hey, coming up now is a new Prince video." Blah blah blah. Prince is on concert here. What a juicy tidbits to tell them. You know, to talk about on air. Right. Okay. So you got that all from magazines? Pretty much, yeah, or record company press releases. But primarily to make it sound interesting and exciting, your gold came from the magazines. So which was the very first magazine that you thought, this is the one I'm going to keep and collect? I think it was Q, because I went, I was, you know, I had the collecting bug. So it was Loot Magazine. Do you remember Loot Magazine? It's so kind of yeah. just people buy and sell stuff through it. Lawrence I, does. Okay, and I'd go into the back of that and sort of see people just shedding their magazines. I remember meeting some guy on some, it was like some dodgy drug deal on the motorway to get his whole collection of Q, like 15 years of Q magazine, because that was, and still is, a leading music magazine. Got that. Then it was Empire, Playboys, Enemies, Melody Makers. The list goes on, about 3,000 different titles. What do you do with the magazines now you've collected them? The plan is actually to commercialise them, to unlock that content, to make this all go online and be accessible to the whole world. So it'd be like a, in short, you could say a Spotify for magazines. People could go and search whether you're a student, a creative, an advertising agency, anything you want from 1910 to present day that's been in a magazine. You could search by image, by article, by cover, by person. Now, here's another very interesting thing. My dad, years ago, wanted to get rid of He had a whole bunch of magazines. He used to collect film and filming magazine. Nobody wanted them. Nobody wanted them. And I know somebody else who's also trying to get rid of a whole bunch of magazines. And we looked everywhere to get rid of them. And that everybody, we just thought, right, recycle them. Hate them when they're skipped. There was a place for them. Please, anyone listening, you know, donate them to us. Go to hymenarchive.com. We will take your magazines because there is a place for them. When that content is unlocked digitally, that is rich. So but how's somebody yeah. going to do that? You're going to f- scan every page. Then? There was a company who's going to do that for us. Some magazines are starting to do it, like you're saying, talking about film uh, uh, film magazines and things. I think it's Cinefix magazine who have yeah. gone through and started to digitise uh, their content. A lot I of magazines done it from about 2005 yeah, onwards. Yeah, but exactly. So this is kind of back catalogue, which, which doesn't exist. It's the same way as, you know, television was thought of like that and it was just something, it was just a piece of hardware, a piece of software and you would record over things and then people suddenly realise, hang on, you need to keep hold of this keep stuff. It. But it's yeah. just, yeah, the BBC were well, well, well known for all those old Missing Doctor Who episodes, exactly. those Top of the Pops that were found in people's attics. Mm. So, uh, but do you read a magazine still? Or is I don't it just... read every magazine. I don't have time to read every, every magazine because in, in my other life, I, I license music for television and film. So I don't, you know, that is sort of the day job. But I read what I want to read. I get a lot of pleasure out of, you know, you, you asked me what my favourite magazines are, Vanity Fair, The New Yorker, long form reading. But, you know, when I was a scriptwriter at MTV, they didn't mean much to me. I read what I can. I don't read, I haven't got time to read all of them. It's impossible. And what about modern day magazines? And I'm talking, let's just go and I'm not picking them out you know it sounds like I'm not even going to mention the titles but there are things maybe like Heat or that sort of thing which are all showbiz and reality stars and oh look she's too big on Mm. the cover she's too thin on the cover Um, are those worth collecting? I think they are again they reflect what was going on you know Heat originally founded I think by um, David Hepworth and Mark Frith that started out as a sort of clone of a US magazine Entertainment Weekly and watching it evolve into this oh she's got a big spot on her backside blah 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 but it reflects culture it reflects what's going on it reflects celebrity film television what was happening personally you know I'm I'm not going to read Heat or Closer every week but I think there's a very valid place for those oh, magazines. Oh, I, 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 com- I completely agree with you. I yeah. really do think there is. Uh, Larry, do you read magazines? 
I do, yeah. Um, I try to. I used to read sort of Q. I was always a big fan of you know Empire and Total Film, and you know being being a film fan, obviously, and sort of you know really interested in sort of special effects and filmmaking. Um, so yeah, I used to read those sort of things. But again, you know, you kind of I did that and ended up with a big stack of Empire magazines what sitting did you in the do corner, and I still have them. Well, <laughs> so, I want to get rid of. Them. But honestly, you think of think of the education. You pay people for their magazines. Some people are very kind of donate. I mean, if it's something we really, really wanted and didn't have, yeah. But what do you really, really want and you haven't got? Tons. I won't bore you with the specifics. There's a whole catalogue. Oh, no, go I, on, give uh, us an idea because there might be somebody there's listening. There's a few missing issues of a couple of early Playboys. Again, you say films and filming. I'm, there's maybe four out of that whole collection. But I don't have that angst I used to get about, oh, my gosh, mm. I'm missing. You know, there's tons. There's tons. And You're how, never going to have every magazine. How did the Guinness World Book of Records, how did they count them I mean how did they do we that we had to go through hardcore verification they said you, you will either come down and do it on the spot and you pay us a substantial amount of money or and then they gave us this huge checklist of you know we had to give them so much evidence of spreadsheets ph- photographs documentation and it had to be verified by two independent people and how is it to be in the Guinness Book of Records it's good it's helped I like it do you, you know, it's a, yeah so do you have a little certificate? I have the certificate. <laughs> Where do you hang your certificate? Uh, not, in the, not even in the toilet. It's in some envelope somewhere. <gasps> but it's you somewhere have... on one of my Facebook posts or an Instagram post. It is there. Do you have Do you have a certificate on the wall from the Guinness Book of Records? Uh, yes. What's your Guinness um, record? Uh, you don't. From... <laughs> I don't think it's actually on my wall. I think it's in the wall of the production company. What, what's the, what is the it? Most um, children's BAFTAs, I believe, oh. Horrible Histories. How so, many BAFTAs? Go and show off. I don't know. I think it got four consecutive best children's comedy or something like that i think so th- i think overall it won sort of six or seven but it it was that one that, that i was Guinness joking and you haven't I, well i know well it's not, i say it's not on my wall and i certainly not a show that i can take a <laughs> sole credit for but uh, yeah the, the show on which i worked is certainly in there oh how wonderful now uh, we always ask the same question james to every single collector and we've done so for nearly three years if say if there was a fire and god forbid that ever happened i'm not wishing it on you okay. what is the one magazine that you would grab I great question i just as i say there's there's nothing you know, we have to ask the question we ask it every week it's closer isn't it <laughs> it's heat no. okay it would be Ah, I can't, you know, I really can't answer I have it. to push you. you Everyone's push given. Me. We had okay, a man so who collected magazine. train covers. Um, we had a man who collected cones in the street. He told me which one. His particular cone. Yeah. We, ta- we had a woman uh, from America who collects the covers of umbrellas. She had 3,000. She told us the one. The one magazine. It would be not even Playboy issue one. It's just, it's it's the body of work. It's the aggregation. Gabby, I'm, I'm going to have to really break tradition. I no, can't, can't do it. I can't. So you're going to go for Playboy? No. You're going to go for Q. <laughs> you can have a box. You're just being bullied in the okay, okay, right. box. Okay, this is really. Okay, 2600, a fantastic magazine all about hacking, surveillance, and counterculture because the spirit of that magazine is fantastic. It's okay, called 2600, so- the number's 2600. They would be saved, but. Wouldn't you, be much use. No, well, let's hope that will never happen. You. You'll never have to go through that. Now, if people want to find out more about your collection, where do they go to? Go to hymenarchive.com and it links to the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram. But as I say, you know, just imagine that content being unlocked, available to the whole world. That is the plan. And we're heading in the right direction. Okay, well, thank you for that. Thank now, you. can I just ask you about the other job that you do, music yeah. licensing? Mm. So if somebody, uh, you know, when there's a movie yeah. and then somebody has, how does the movie and the pop song happen? Does the music long, it can be a long process? Oh. So it's somebody is going to say, look, we need music for this scene. They may have decided on the piece of music. They may get something composed, or they'll say, you know, whatever we want, Madonna. And Madonna might say it's too, you know, she do you have too to much call money. Madonna? Do you say, you, hi, Madonna, it's James here? You can if you've got those good relationships. Have you with um, Madonna? Her, I, I, funny enough, not her, but her PA. Do you know get, Madonna's PA? I do. I was DJed at Guy Ritchie's wedding. Excuse me. Recently. Oh, but that guy, no, they not were together, Guy, they were together oh. for a time. That's your link. Okay, I like that one. You get that link. Let's go to the locomotion now.